Good afternoon, everybody. My name is David Unger. I'm the CEO of Sentient Buildings. Uh, Sentient Buildings is a wireless IoT uh, device infrastructure company uh, where we integrate wireless devices to traditional BMS systems and platforms, and we bring all of that data up to the cloud securely and reliably. So my presentation today is uh, going to be on creating full transparency in buildings through IoT technologies. Uh, you know, in, in the sub, subtitle there, from the edge, through the fog and into the clouds, is how do you get full transparency of your data um, in, in uh, controlling that data from the cloud back down to the edge? So you know, just looking at how we put these pieces together, what are the core components of an IoT network or design? Um, you have the cloud, the cloud's uh, where you know, the data is gonna ultimately be pushed to. Uh, you have your subject here in the middle of the building, uh, the edge is your edge device network. You know, so how, how does that network function? How are you getting uh, data from the very edges of your building and not just uh, from your central plant systems or from air handlers or from other operational technologies in the building? How do you get into the tenant spaces and collect data on, on uh, temperature, humidity, or how do you control uh, individual terminal units uh, in apartments and other things? And so how do you get bi-directional uh, with monitoring and control to the edge. Uh, and then the fog concept here is, is all about um, distributing that computing power, right? So how do you distribute your computing power between the cloud uh, and the edge, right? So it's how do you maintain, manage your security, uh, but how do you maintain data across uh, all systems, uh, across both the cloud and, and the edge? Uh, but let's just talk about some of the, the traditional kind of problems that uh, we try to solve for building owners and operators. Uh, the first one is wires. Uh, wires are very constraining uh, in buildings and in, in wired systems and wiring up sensor data and wiring up uh, devices and control points. It, it becomes expensive to maintain those systems. And you get, and you don't really typically will, you don't, you don't deploy to the edge uh, uh, in a way that makes sense for the building uh, because wired BMS infrastructure, it's expensive to install, maintain, upgrade, and extend. And what we find is, you know, while you could potentially control every PTAC in a building, every electric baseboard heater in a building, while you could do these things, um, they're not economical or feasible in, in um, old construction or in retrofit projects. So paybacks for the owners uh, to deploy to the edge are, are too long for them to even consider. What we really look at is how, how to achieve this full visibility um, and do it reliably with wireless. Because wireless technology is typically, you know, it's notoriously in a lot of ways unreliable. It might be okay to monitor a temperature sensor, but if you're controlling somebody's PTAC unit or if you're doing something um, that um, needs to be done reliably and consistently, you know, you, you can't be subject to interference, wireless interference, or other problems that might arise with wireless device networks. Uh, so the way we look at this is we've divided wireless networks into two uh, topologies. Uh, you, you would, we look at uh, the STAR network as having a central hub, right, that can coordinate and monitor devices that communicate directly to it. So the STAR network provides basically a, a local area or a personal area wireless network within a space. So within a specific space, um, uh, it could be an apartment, could be an office space, uh, but you have this uh, local area wireless network and you could actually deploy on this network because it's now very short range. And when I say short range, I mean like 30 to, to 40 feet, um, is you could de deploy low to no power end nodes. Uh, nodes at the edge that can be powered by ambient light, can be powered by kinetic energy, so that you don't even have to put bar batteries in those devices, and it could be as simple as peeling and sticking something on a wall, like a thermostat, and getting readings back, back to your hub. Uh, so the mesh comes in where these hubs act as repeaters on a mesh. So you have your star network at each node, and each hub becomes a repeater. Um, and there you form a building wide area network where all the mesh nodes communicate with one another 
and they uh, report back to a central gateway or central system in the building. And that way you, you achieve full reliable coverage across the entire site. Then now once you have um, you know, the wireless network in place, you know, what can you do with it? What kind of devices can you deploy? Uh, and you could, do, you could deploy these devices very cost effectively, temperature sensors, actuators, uh, occupancy sensors, uh, energy meters, uh, and you could deploy them without having to run power or communication wiring to them. So it becomes a very inexpensive deployment, and not only that, it becomes reliable in, in, in terms of wireless range and communication. Okay, so now you're bringing all of the wireless data back to a central point. That's great, but now what typically happens is the data still remains separate from existing uh, building management systems, right? Because wireless IoT data should be simply extending existing BMS platforms. They should, should not be their own platform or their own system. So the latest IoT device networks are typically pr proprietary. You have to use one kind of sensor. You have to use some uh, specific kind of sensor. They might have their own portal platform or their own lo wire, uh, local client to access the system. You, you want to basically build a platform that allows for extension of this IoT device da data so that it can be used by other systems in the building. The other thing uh, that happens across multiple systems is your data definitions are not in sync. They're not homogenized. They're not normalized. So the way that you define your data is different across multiple systems. So you need a, a, a simple way to bring all, of that all the data definitions together so that they're defined correctly across all your platforms so that you can uh, identify systems and platforms consistently to perform analytics, uh, to run uh, alarming and, and create issues across the system. So it's very important to get that straightened out. So where are these edge to fog gateways that bridge the divide fit in? Through it, you create this fully secure VPN network to your cloud. So now you've secured your network of all of this data, uh, you have integration of your wireless IoT receivers uh, into that network, uh, and then you also create uh, on-site data storage and edge computing power through a central FOG gateway, where now both uh, the um, wireless network, uh, the IoT device network, can communicate into the building, communicate into the other building systems, and the same goes for the building systems that were traditionally not connected to these device networks. So you have your IoT systems and you have traditional BMS platforms all coming together in a central system. So at now with, with data coming up to the clouds, um, you know what, what's happening now is there are many cloud platforms that are out there. You see many of them here today performing analytics against the data or providing other services against the data becomes a problem because you, you still don't get a comprehensive view of operations. Many users have to log into multiple systems in order to evaluate and analyze their data. So really what's needed is a central system to aggregate the data at scale with a suite of APIs to these external systems in the cloud so you could have full data integration. So making these connections in the cloud, you know, you, you'd have a central portal. I mean, there, there, there needs to be the single pane of glass where the data um, is, is exists in the cloud and is monitored and controlled in the cloud. But then you have integrations to all the other systems that you might need to retrieve data from. Um, so you, you provide in the cloud a standard compliant data integration platform with a single pane of glass view into that system. Um, and then you integrate the value chain of all of these other providers in the cloud. Um, and, and eventually what you'll get is a, 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 a method of setting the stage for full uh, integration and collaboration across all cloud, cloud platforms so that you can easily share data across systems. You can distribute data to, your, to uh, your engineering and energy consulting firms so that they can evaluate that data and, and help the building owner make decisions on capital projects, for example. Um, the tenants and residents can easily gain access to their thermostats easily. The owner operator could grant access to, a, uh, to access a thermostat without them having to put their own Nest device in or some other type of Wi-Fi device. Uh, HVAC service companies 
could uh, gain access through an act, this, this access control system where data is shared so that they can evaluate problems with your air handler or your boiler plant or your chiller plant. So th this, this, this creates this, this idea of really full transparency from edge to cloud, right? You, you get full transparency all the way down to the device level, and now you're providing full transparency to all the collaborators who actually need access or can't, if they had access, can provide better services to the building. So what does this roadmap to transparency look like? Um, wireless start and mesh remote control nodes that connect seamlessly uh, to existing building systems. So really designing your wireless IoT device networks so that it is standardized uh, and compliant with existing systems. Um, you want to support standard compliant edge devices while maintaining this robust backhaul. Uh, you want to eliminate the need going forward for power and communication wiring. Um, we recently did a project in a two million square foot building um, where you can put a device now anywhere in that building, a sensor, a thermostat, um, any control point. You can just place the device in the building and it will come up on the network and be visible up to the cloud. Uh, so that really allows complete flexibility on, on the types of sensors that you use and you could do it at, at lo much lower cost than was traditionally available. And then really getting this open protocol cloud platform that's able to not only receive the data from the, the building systems, but also fully integrate with all of the other cloud-based platforms so that you have a, a fully um, robust platform in the cloud that has multiple data sources and can really uh, give you uh, a single pane glass into the view of operations. And um, that's my presentation, thank you.